Today is Friday, July 20th, 2012. And I just recently heard from my relatives who live in Aurora, Colorado. The site of that tragic shooting and sad shooting that we had today and where some lives were lost. And our prayers go out to the families that lost the loved ones. Now, many people are saying they're shocked by this event, but I really have to wonder, why would anyone be shocked by this? These events are happening on a regular basis now throughout the world. And where there is no sanctity of human life being pushed anymore, they're gonna to continue to happen. In fact, the Bible states these things are gonna happen and they're only gonna to escalate. Too many of us take life for granted here. We believe we're all gonna die when we get old. But the fact is, tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. And for Christians, we're at peace with that fact. But for those without Christ, it's a pretty scary thought. It can be hopeless, I know. And now fear is controlling most of you right now because you want to hold on to this life. But events like this should show us that life is so fragile. Rich, middle class, or poor, we're all going to die. And most likely you don't know how or when. But the most important thing is that you're made right with Christ. God who came in human flesh, the one who created you before your time is up. Why, why do you need to be right with Christ before you die? Hmm. Contrary to proper belief and all the self-help books and all your positive, positive speaking instructors and speakers out there, you're not a good person. Now I, probably, now I know I probably lost most of you right there, but that's the reality of it. Now I know you've done some good things. We all have done some good things. In fact, the mob and the mafia did good things. But doing good things doesn't make you a good person. But I know some of you resist that notion and want to believe deep down inside that you are a good person. Well, if we compare ourselves to people like Bin Laden, Hitler, Hussein, Manson, and the like, that would be a valid point. But what we have done is lowered the standard to make ourselves look better. For example, most of us can't dunk a 10-foot basketball goal so we go out there and buy those adjustable eight foot, nine foot goals so we can dunk it and make ourselves feel better. But in reality, what we have done is we've lowered the established standard and an NBA player would just laugh at us. We need to raise our lowered standard to the already established higher standard, no matter how much it might frustrate us that we can't dunk a 10 foot goal. There is an established standard for us to examine ourselves and our lives to see if we all really are good people. In fact, take this simple test for me. Have you ever lied before in your life? Have you ever stolen anything before? Or how about this? At any time, have you ever used God's name in vain or as a cuss word? OMG? Or you ever said Jesus Christ when you mistaken your finger for a nail? And fellas, have you ever lusted at a woman before? And ladies, have you ever lusted at a man? Now I don't, now I don't know most of you all, but I can 99.9% .9 bank on you answered yes for at least one, if not all, of those questions. And these questions came from the established higher standard that we have called the Ten Commandments. And in fact, there are six more, but for the sake of time, we won't even get into that. We have all lied several times. We've taken things that are not ours. We've used God's name carelessly, and by all means, I know we've all lusted in our minds, but this sexual lust at another person. And some of us even crossed the act, the physical act of committing adultery, having sex with someone who we're not married to. In fact, Jesus said, if any man looks at a woman with lust in his heart, He's already committed adultery. And it's the same for you ladies too. So if you have been honest with yourself here, by your own admission, you will have to admit that you are a lying, blaspheming, adulterous thief. Ouch. That hurts. 
doesn't sound too much like a good person now, doesn't it? And you know what? Now you're worthy to be judged and punished by the lawgiver. Oh yes, I did say punished by the lawgiver. Doesn't the judge at your local courthouse punish those who break the law? How would you feel if a known rapist or a burglar in your neighborhood went to court and the judge let him walk out free? You'd be outraged. You'd be, you'd be up there protesting. You'd be doing everything possible to get that judge thrown out from their position. So if a human judge is expected to execute justice upon lawbreakers, why would you expect not the judge who made the humans do the same? Is that logical? The first part of Romans 3.23 in the Bible says, for everyone is sin and fall short of God's glorious standard. So what does that mean? Pretty simple. We've all, we've all broken God's laws and we deserve to be punished for it. And what is that punishment? But Romans 6, 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. Death. So all our law breaking has earned us death. So no matter how many good deeds you've done, your law breaking overrides that. Just imagine if a, just imagine if a drunk driver killed a family in a car wreck and he went to a period of, before the judge and he said this, he said, judge, I promise not to drink anymore. I would donate money to Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And I've already done 40 hours of community service. And judge, since I've done these good deeds, or these good things, I expect to walk free here. Do you expect for the judge to say, okay, yeah, you're right. Now go free. Of course not, why? Because his good deeds cannot override his law breaking. And the same holds true for you and I. And that's the point. He will still be punished for his sin, and so will you and I, unless there is some type of provision or mercy granted by the judge. Romans 5, 8 says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh yeah, and you remember that verse, Romans 3.23 that I told you about earlier? Well, the verse has the second part. The first part said, the wages of sin is death, but the second part said, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. The free gift. So you and I can't earn it with good deeds. It's actually freely given. In fact, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not, that not of yourselves, it is, the, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works that no one should boast. Now wow, isn't that the total opposite the way we think? So what must you and I do to receive this free gift of eternal life that we can't earn or do anything to get. What must you and I do to have all our law breaking deeds thrown out by the judge? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart the man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses, resulting in salvation. So why do you need Jesus before you die? Because that's the only way for sinful humanity to be reconciled to a holy and righteous God. Jesus said it himself in John 14, 6, when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. So with today, quite possibly being your last day breathing on this side, with life being so unpredictable, with so many unexpected things happening on a daily basis, what better time than now for you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? What better time than now to assure yourself with salvation, even if tragedy were to kill you? What better time than now to accept the free gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus? I can't think of any. Can you?